Yo, what's up? This is JB, and it's time for your history lesson. We're going to explore the issues of false advertising, invention and pioneering, technological advancements, history, the law, and the alternative. First off, we're going to address the issues of false advertising by eBay. eBay continues to advertise for items which they prohibit on their website. These are all examples of search engine advertising which eBay pays for. They advertise items that no eBay seller is allowed to sell on eBay at all because they are restricted and prohibited items on their crappy website. So as a consumer and under these false pretenses and their false advertising for items that they do not offer, you're inclined to go look on eBay to see if these are readily available. And what will you find? Well, you won't find any seller on eBay selling any automatic switchblades because they're prohibited by their user agreement. But you will find all of the paid advertisers at the bottom of the search so that you can readily find who distributes such items. Now take into note that they might change this because I've embarrassed them and proven that they're a scumbag company. Let's address the issues that are with legal items to be sold, such as spring assisted knives and assisted knives, completely legal by the user agreement and there are sellers that sell them all the time. The company also prohibits sellers from displaying their website to prevent buyers from leaving eBay and going to the stores and buying such items themselves but why on earth on the bottom of the search is there paid advertisers for those who do not sell on eBay who am I I'm a power seller and I'm one of the top 1,000 reviewers on eBay they also have a policy of no keyword spamming keyword spamming is advertising items such as an mp3 player and putting iPod in the listing when it's not an iPod false advertising is what it's called just like you do eBay I want to reach out to all my kin that are fishermen. This goes out to all of you. Let's not forget that the original auto switchblade was pioneered by the Charade Cutlery Company during the 1920s. It was developed as a tool for fishermen to cut the nets in extreme seagoing conditions where a rough swell and a snagged net could sink the trowler. The charade old timer name has been around for over a hundred years. Over the years this brand has earned the reputation for toughness and reliability. The charade cutlery company began in 1904 in Walden, the largest of three villages of the town of Montgomery in Orange County, New York. Walden was purchased in 1736 by Alexander Kidd. The settlers were Scotch, Irish, English, and German. The village fathers needed to replace the mills as a source of employment and began encouraging knife manufacturers to relocate from nearby Dutchess County to the vacant buildings where the New York Knife Company made much of its cutlery employed by the Union Army during the U.S. Civil War. After the war, other knife makers came to Walden and the village consequently became known as Knife Town. A few years ago, the original Charade Cutlery Company went bankrupt and after its collapse all of its assets were sold off to pay its creditors these assets were sold off to a number of companies Taylor Cutlery in the US purchased the rights to the name and models however they did not buy the company or the stock and cannot do warranty on old models the new knives are made with better updated U.S. machinery and upgraded components. The steel is 440C high carbon stainless steel with a Rockwell hardness of 5960. Taylor Cutlery has gone to great pains to maintain the quality and improve upon it. They have their own production control and the finalized product is better than ever. Remember that the ease of speed of accessibility to a knife blade makes it more simplistic. The faster access merely makes the blade easier and safer and quicker to deploy. This does not make it more offensive as a weapon. It's still just a knife, just more useful to legitimate users. Those who perpetrate crimes abusing knives have their blades drawn long before they intended to use them, as offensive crimes involving knives almost are entirely premeditated. The ease with which the tool is usable in no way makes it more or less offensive than any other knife, just safer for the user and others in close proximity to its use. 
use. The automatic knife has accumulated a bad reputation over the years. Terms like flick knife, switchblade, were all branded by tabloid press and Hollywood hype. Hollywood movies such as Rebel Without a Cause and West Side Story portrayed these knives as weapons of hoodlums. The portrayal of a useful tool was never depicted by Hollywood. They never showed any fisherman that was caught in a life-threatening event in high swells to save their lives, which was the whole purpose from the Charade Cutlery Company to produce such a knife. When has the media ever portrayed the truth in its full entirety, limiting the rights of useful law-abiding users because of the actions of a few idiotic hoodlum criminals? have dictated bans in the UK, Canada, Australia, and many US states for possession and carrying such an item. Thanks to the powers that be, however, in the US, it's up to the state to decide. Many states do prohibit them altogether, as possession is considered illegal, as well as carrying them. But there are many states, however, that allow possession and do not allow concealment or carrying them. There also are a lot of states that allow possession and carrying them with some limitations on concealment. All the information on state statutes are available. All you have to do is search it out or you can call your local police department and propose the question yourself. Unfortunately, there is a federal switchblade act that prohibits interstate commerce of such items. Like stated before, the state has the sovereignty to decide what it regulates inside the borders of such states. The Fed restricts interstate commerce but have exceptions to the rule for military, law enforcement, one-armed persons, and knife distributors who distribute to the first three that were stated. So there are no federal restrictions on a federal level with what activity goes on within the state level but the state sets the precedence of what is sold inside such a state. So what are the alternatives? Buy them as a kit. You can assemble them in five minutes or you can purchase an assisted knife. Assisted knives, also known as bring assist knives, bring assisted knives, torsion assist knives, AO knives, there are no federal restrictions on assisted knives. Assisted knives are legal in the UK, Canada, Australia, and all of the US 50 states. Yes, certain counties and districts do prohibit such items so you'll have to check with your local laws to see if you are allowed to carry such an item in the public. When Kershaw revealed the chive at the SHOT Show in America during 2003, people were amazed at the simplicity of its design. After all, how could someone pack so much technical advancement into such a small packet? Acclaimed American custom knife maker Ken Onion is the man behind this wonderful new design. But perhaps the origins of Mr. Onions marble need to be a little more explored. Kursaw's little chive has proved to be quite a controversial showpiece. So what's the secret behind its incredible easy to use blade deployment mechanism? Some have questioned the legality of carrying something that opens so readily, yet the law is quite clear. An automatic knife is defined as an auto of any knife powered by a spring or operated by a button or any other device attached to the handle. The chive has neither a spring nor any device attached to the handle, relying instead on a pre-tensioned steel bar to provide the power, an invention pioneered by Blackie Collins on the Myerco Power Assisted range. It also features an extended tang that protrudes from the handle. Another idea developed from Kit Carson's flipper system found on the Columbia River M16 model. Combine these two ideas and wow, it's fast alright, but it's still within the limits of acceptability. Some argue that this just exploits the loophole within the law. I would like to point out that this is just an extremely clever conceptual design and it should be appreciated as such. Kershaw promote the safety aspect of the design and irrespective of whether it's fast or not you can't escape the fact that the whole idea is to provide a tool which is easily and readily available for use with maximum safety in mind got questions i got answers email me at jb at roadsideimports.com